Hello on the awesome tutor, yes I am back and today we'll be going over the political consolidation topic of Mao's China, specifically defeating the Communist Party's opponents. So first we need to know who were the Communist Party's opponents or who were Mao's opponents. We have political opponents such as other parties, dissidents, intellectuals and any members within the party itself who were not loyal enough or who tried to uh, stray away from Maoist thought, or did not necessarily agree with Mao's policies. Class enemies, bourgeoisie, capitalists, blah blah blah. What you have to understand is, many of Mao's political opponents were labeled as class enemies, so it's kind of hard to differentiate between who were the class enemies and who were the political uh, enemies. So there's a lot of overlap in terms of the methods that he used and the opponents that he, he purged and got rid of. So if you're writing an essay, you can decide which um, point you want to put into which paragraph. Okay? Uh, criminals, such as bandits and warlords. So what Mao had on his hands was a decentralized form of control in the country with warlords mainly ha having the control in their local area and a period of, of somewhat an, an un, a period of instability which Mao had to rectify. Uh, minorities specifically religious minorities like the Buddhists in Tibet and the Muslims in Xinjiang. So methods the Communist Party used a lot of methods, uh, propaganda, the PLA, the People's Liberation Army, uh, registration, so people had to register with the authorities, giving them all their personal details and their background, whether they were from a bourgeois family or whatever. Okay, um, So th this created somewhat of a, a nation of informers, as many historians call it, and basically meaning that Neighbors spied on neighbor, children reported on their parents, friends snitched on their friends, struggle meetings. It was basically a sham trial where the these uh, capitalist scum, as they called them, were tortured. And if they were lucky, they were executed. If they were unlucky, they were sent to the appalling conditions in the Laogai system. Uh, torture, very common. And here we have the Laogai system itself labor camps. Okay? But also, don't forget, the Communist Party also used legislation in order to consolidate its control. So, political opponents. Uh, party purges, very important. In 1949, there were over 10 political parties, such as the left uh, version of the Nationalists, the left Gomendang, and the Democratic Leagues. But, by 1952, they were destroyed in a set of repressive moves, so they're gone now, and that meant that the Chinese Communist Party was the sole legal party within China, giving it absolute authority and creating a one-party state. So they removed opponents whose ideology was in opposition to communism. Uh, Gao Gang and Rao Shushi. Uh, in 1954, they were purged from the party, so from the Communist Party itself, showing that even within the party, you were not safe. And in fact, these two individuals had very high positions within the party. Okay, Gao Gang, this guy right here, he was head of the Northeast China Bureau, chairman of the State Planning Commission, very high position. He was indicted for trying to establish an independent kingdom in Manchuria, and he committed suicide before they could do anything to him. Rao Zhushi, this guy here, also had a very high position, head of the organization department of the Central Committee. Okay? He was accused of writer's deviation. I believe he, he criticized um, some of the campaigns during the first five-year plan, or he also um, was not loyal enough, according to Mao, or not enthusiastic enough in implementing these policies. So he was also purged, and he died in prison. So what you had here is, these officials with such high positions within the party, they were purged, showing that not even those with high-ranking positions within the party were safe from Mao's terror. Basically, anyone who Mao deemed to be an opponent was an opponent, without question, and therefore they were subsequently 
purged and removed. So, uh, there was some legislation in 1954 called the Resolution on the Unity of the Party, which banned factionalism. So these two were accused of creating factions within the party. And so this made opposition to Mao's policies more difficult to organize. Uh, the Hundred Flowers campaign, I'm just going to go over this briefly. I might go over it in more detail in another video. So... What you have to understand about the Hundred Flowers campaign is many historians disagree about the extent about why Mao launched the campaign. Whether he wanted to genuinely launch it for debate and to improve communism through debate, or whether he used it as a trap to uh, get rid of any intellectuals who still harbored some opposition internally to the Communist Party. So, regardless of whether or not he wanted to remove opposition with this campaign. Opposition was removed during this campaign because what happened was it snowballed and it overwhelmed the party and Mao, where even Mao himself was criticized by intellectuals. So he converted it into the anti-rightist movement, saying that these poisonous weeds have grown among the fragrant flowers. And so 400,000, 700,000 intellectuals were purged. So he removed them as a form of opposition. The Three Antis Movement and the Five Antis Movement. So the Three Antis Movement targeted corruption, obstructionist bureaucracy, and waste. Obstructionist bureaucracy is just inefficiency within the party itself. Um, if you want to remember this easy, uh, very, very easily, use the acronym COW. So think of a communist cow when you think of the Three Antis movements, no. and you will never forget it, trust me. So, anyone who worked for the previous nationalist regime was now deemed a class enemy and was subsequently purged. With the Five Antis movement, it was an extension of the Three Antis movement, and it targeted bribery, tax evasion, fraud industrial sabotage, and theft of state property. So, a useful acronym, be fit, like this guy right here. You see, metaphorically, he is becoming ideologically fit and ideologically buff, so that he may be a true communist. Okay? Remember it like that. Be fit. So, um, it allowed the Communist Party to seize control over economic assets, because... Specifically, capitalists and business owners were targeted during this campaign, and they were forced to uh, pay fines and sell their stocks to the communist government. It meant that they no longer controlled the industry, but the communist party controlled the industry. Okay, so establishing control economically and politically, and also removing these business owners because you had these tiger beaters, which were basically... Uh, groups of party cadres which were formed to gather incriminating evidence on these bourgeois capitalists and they were subsequently dragged to struggle meetings where they were tortured and executed or even sent to the Laogai system. So tiger beaters think of uh, a corrupt capitalist tiger and um, a big stick because they tortured them to death. <laughs> Let's play that again. Naughty capitalist tiger, naughty. You should embrace communism. Okay. Uh, nation of informers. So you had local watchers in the streets um, who kept the local Communist Party officials informed about any suspicious ha behavior. And you had bright red denunciation boxes set up on street corners. So instead of like a mailbox, you had denunciation boxes where children could even gather incriminating evidence on their parents and post it in this box here. So basically it created this atmosphere of fear where everyone spied on each other in order to divert attention away from themselves or prove their, their loyalty to the communist regime. So basically it created a nation of snakes where everyone betrayed each other and you could trust no one, okay? Uh, registration, very important. You had three forms of registration, but the most intrusive of, of which was the Dangan system, because it contained all the personal details of every single individual. Okay, Meaning that the Communist Party could keep tabs 
on anyone who is a former capitalist, a former bourgeois business owner, or anyone whose details makes it look like they are doing some suspicious behavior here, so they need to remove them as a potential um, threat to the communist regime. So basically, it was like Big Brother in 1984, where the Communist Party knew everything about you, and you had the party cadres watching you, and even your own friends and family and children. So, Big Brother is watching you, except it's Mao. Okay? Uh, the agrarian reform law, so, remember, they also used legislation, not just terror. But, but of course, this legislation also involved some terror. Um, so, Mao called on the peasants to seize um, the land from their landlords, and this basically resulted in struggle meetings, as you see here, where landlords were abused and tortured, and one to two million landlords were executed. So, removing opposition through torture and death, okay? Uh, propaganda! During the Korean War, you had this Aid Korea Resist America campaign, um, where, let's talk about how it instilled loyalty first. So there was national unity and a sense of patriotism where people even donated their wages to the war effort, okay, um, which instilled, obviously, loyalty to the communist system, an ingrained sense of loyalty, okay, and reverence. But also, Mao used this campaign, Mao used the Korean War as a scapegoat, as a pretext to further repress and use terror against the population. So he used the war as a rationale to purge enemies who were accused of being capitalist spies or traitors working with the United States. You see here, I think this is um, one of the generals, one of the US generals in the Korean War. He is depicted as somewhat of a vampiric ghoul. And you have a heroic Chinese worker here who is defending his homeland. So propaganda was, and censorship was very important. So, the reunification campaign, specifically in Guangdong. So, after the civil war, the nationalists fled to Formosa, Taiwan, which is right here. And um, it was rumored that they were using Guangdong as a base for spies and saboteurs in order to retake China from the communist government. So, it was traditionally a pro-nationalist stronghold. Okay. And um, what Mao did, or what the CCP did, is they executed a bunch of people there. So, um, bandits and warlords. There was a violent bloodletting in the early 1950s, specifically Shanghai and Guangzhou. Okay, so most of them were executed or sent to the Laogai system. So, restoring some sense of stability and central control in China. If these pictures look familiar, it's because it's from the movie Mulan. Okay. Uh, yeah, the death toll here. Some facts and uh, some facts and statistics which you can use in the exam. Um, dealing with minorities, so suppressing religious opposition uh, in Tibet, um, Mao and the communists claimed that Tibet had always been a part of China, so they had a right to reclaim it for the communist homeland. So a PLA army was dispatched. And within six months, open resistance within Tibet was suppressed. And they set up a puppet government where the control was directly from Beijing and from the communists. And they had a, an agreement, a 17-point agreement, which set out these terms. Okay, and they banned tradi traditional religious practice within that area. They banned the language and history in schools, making Mandarin or Pinyin the official language there. So what that did is it weakened a belief system which was rival to communism, suppressing opposition, specifically religious opposition. Okay, and also the, the Dalai Lama here, you see, um, represented a rival leader for the communists and for Mao, and Mao was not going to tolerate that. He was going to be the only sole authority within China, not any religious leaders. So, the Dalai Lama's role within Tibet was significantly hindered. In Xinjiang, you had a similar pattern with the Muslims. 
So, significantly, you know, other than the religious aspect, Xinjiang bordered Soviet-controlled Outer Mongolia here. And so the Ma Mao and the communists were also concerned that Xinjiang would be subject would, would be subject to Soviet influence and thereby allowing the Soviets to gain a political and ideological foothold within China. And obviously they were not going to tolerate that. So suppressing opposition and reunifying Xinjiang with the central control in Beijing meant that it acted as somewhat of a buffer zone between China and the Soviet Union. Okay? Um, so the PLA was dispatched and they imposed control. Interestingly, the Xinjiang leaders were invited to a political consultative conference in Beijing in 1949 after the Civil War, but their plane crashed, killing all on board. Hmm... Hmm. That's suspicious, isn't it? So, there are lots of rumors that Mao and the communists orchestrated this plane crash, but there's no concrete evidence to support that. But nevertheless, this plane crash meant that it, it removed the communist opposition because they were all dead from Xinjiang. And so, their replacements which were sent directly from the communist headquarters in Beijing, were basically puppet leaders, ensuring that centralized communist control was exerted on Xinjiang in this reunification campaign. Okay? So the Laogai system was very important, but its role was not limited to, su to suppressing any specific category of opposition, it helped suppress and remove all forms of opposition because many of them were sent to the Laogai system thereby thereby removing them from the uh, public so that they could not spread their messages or incite any opposition or threats to the communist regime thereby limiting their influence and increasing the communist party's power. So reform through labor um, basically they were tortured Okay, they were beaten and beaten until they confessed, similar to a struggle meeting, but mu but much, much worse. But they also had study sessions where they were indoctrinated with communist propaganda, so at least they learned something while they were there. So Mao removed opposition by sending them to the Laogai, away from the public. He removed opposition by torturing these Laogai prisoners, so that through fear they would not oppose the communist government, and he also removed opposition by indoctrinating loyalty to the communist regime. So we have some, some statistics showing the scale of the Laogai system, which would help you to establish its, its significance, and, and would help you to, to rank its significance in an essay. Okay? So, that's it for, for this um, video. Now, if you want me to go over any specific topic within China or within the British Empire, please leave a comment telling me, t telling me which topic you want, because there is no way that I will be able to cover the entire syllabus for China and the British Empire between now and the actual exams. I can try, I can try, but realistically I won't be able to. So any specific topic you want me to go over, just say so. Okay? This has been the Awesome Tutor. Bye.